Sims team, what can I say? I'm not mad. I'm just super disappointed. I mean, where's the front door? Oh, okay, there it was. I mean, what can... What what kind of a home is this? I understand it's supposed to be a shipping container, but you don't have a fridge. You don't have a stove. And then, I mean, just... What is going on here? Why is there a long corridor for a hallway, uh, for a living room, and then the sofa is facing out with no TV? There's a huge patio for two? For two? Are you kidding me right now? You know what? I can't get into this right now. I really can't. I'm going to give myself a heart attack. I would appreciate, though, if you stayed with me to see how I remodeled this build. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra and today I am building a container home in the Shipping Views lot in Evergreen Harbor. Uh, that preview that I put in <laughs> of the build before I remodeled it gives you a sense of why I'm disappointed with this pre-Sims team made home. Because not everyone likes building in The Sims 4. You know, some people maybe find it intimidating. Some people, that's just not where they get their enjoyment out of gameplay. Maybe they particularly like storytelling and they love playing with Sims themselves. But I felt like a, for a $40 pack, the fact that they gave us a kitchen with no stove, no fridge. And you know what? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe it was a glitch in my particular computer or my gameplay where it downloaded without those necessary objects. But... This isn't the first time that that really has happened with The Sims. The Sims has historically <laughs> been leaving out toilets on lots, been um, not finishing the color of roofs, uh, making, you know, kind of like leaving the roof patterns not all identical, where I feel like maybe that might have been an oversight on The Sims team where some of the people who built this particular home didn't know didn't didn't know they obviously knew that they didn't do it but they obviously didn't double check or didn't triple check or whatever or they were just fine with putting that out and then charging you 40 bucks for it again i don't want to come across as a hater because i love the sims 4 i really do i get a lot of enjoyment out of playing i love how creative you can be there's a lot of good quality items and packs out there that they've released however i think that they do have a bar or they have some sort of level they should maintain especially when they're putting out expansion packs because expansion packs are not cheap uh especially with everything going on i can see where some people's finances aren't doing the best and the fact is is that for forty dollars that is quite expensive and the fact that some pre-made builds aren't what they should be that there's essential items like a fridge and a stove missing is very very unfortunate right because I don't know if that was maybe a glitch on my part, which, again, I can concede to the fact that it could have been a glitch, but I really don't think so. And the fact is, I feel like a lot of people don't play The Sims the way that builders play The Sims, right? A builder doesn't mind bulldozing the lot and then putting their own version of what they think should be there. But some people specifically stick to storytelling, which I used to do for a very long time. I love storytelling more than I love building, and I would just download a build from the gallery. But then that in and of itself isn't a good excuse. Like you can't just be like, oh, well, if you didn't like this build, you can bulldoze it and download one from the gallery. The fact is, is that you're paying 40 bucks for a pack and they can't even be bothered to give you a complete build. So I felt a little irked by that. And <laughs> I feel like people who have been playing The Sims for a long while remember The Sims 2 and Sims 3 days where uh, everything was more elaborate. You had a, a lot more slots for traits you had um, better storytelling like uh, abilities. Things seem to be more in like not inclusive in in that respect, but it just seemed to be much more elaborate. Yeah, that's the word that I'm looking for. Things seem to be much more elaborate elaborate in The Sims Three Days. And right now, this pack there was already a lot of heat about this pack. Like a lot of people weren't looking forward to it because we kind of thought that we were going to be getting farming. Which, okay, granted, that could be a fault of the Sims community taking an idea and running with it. Despite, you know, the Sims being like, oh, don't get your hopes up because we weren't going to give that to you anyway. They obviously can't say anything. However, I'm just trying to be reasonable in my demands, right? I'm not asking for like a billion and one things. I just think that it's not fair for the people that don't like building already in the Sims to get pre-made homes and pre-made uh, lots that aren't fully finished. I mean, I don't think that that's an unreasonable request. 
I mean, for God's sake, when uh, Mr. Krabs had a restaurant, he had a better customer service policy. Like, no matter, like, your own reasonable request, they just get it done. <laughs> uh, but, you know, let's get past that. Here we are working in the master bedroom. And I don't know if you guys ever seen this in real life. They have they have these things where at the foot of the bed, you have this console table. And there's a slot that opens, and up, opens up and closes up when you press a button on the remote control. And the TV either comes up or it comes down. Right? So when you're watching TV, you press a button, it comes up, and then you get to watch whatever you want. And then when you're tired and you're like, I'm ready to go to bed or I'm ready to do something else. Or I just don't want the TV to be in plain sight. You press another button. It descends back into the console table and it's gone. And I wanted to replicate that because the dresser that came with Eco Living had this very sleek, minimalistic look, which I thought was very, very pretty and beautiful. And I don't know why, but I just got that streak of um, inspiration to do that together. And uh, I didn't use the biggest TV. I already had like one huge one downstairs. So I kind of skipped the master bedroom, but that's only because the kids bedroom looks really similar to the master bedroom. So you're really not missing a lot. And all of those pictures will be at the end uh, there will be screenshots of every single area of this home. So I'm working on the kids' bedroom, and their bedroom is so adorable. I mean, look at that toddler bed. I am so happy it came out. Look at it. I love this sort of hodgepodge look, like everything's recycled, repurposed, especially those rugs kind of gave me that vibe. I think they come from children's stuff or like kids' stuff, if I'm not mistaken. I think those are like kids' stuff uh, rugs. And they look really, really pretty, like these sort of random repurposed drugs all put on top of one another to have this cohesive look. I thought that was super cute. And I rarely use that gradient wall, but for me, I thought that that was really interesting to have as like one accent wall, to have like this gradient sunset wall. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say wall. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, Th this is a room I would have wanted as a kid. I really would have wanted like the really cool, interesting. I think yeah. Right now I replace it with the cloud lamps, and I found like a couple cloud lamps online where they change lights, and they also I don't know if they have sound effects, but they change lights, and it does look like there's lightning on the inside, and are they beautiful? But they're really expensive, so seeing kids have that in The Sims just I don't know stirs up a jealous in me, a jealousy in me. I didn't know I had. Yeah, so this is the kid's bedroom, uh, bathroom that looks exactly like the parent's bathroom. All it really has to sort of differentiate it from the parent's bathroom is like a toddler potty. <laughs> but it's very like modern and unique. Eh, I don't know, like modern bathrooms aren't all that unique in my perspective. They're very minimalistic and that's sort of like the joining kind of factor. Uh, but yeah, so I kind of like put in the things that you need to raise a toddler and I put in because I couldn't fit any of these activity items in the bedroom itself per se, I decided to put them up in this open area space in the back besides the um, the piano. And I actually thought that that looked really nice because a lot of people, I've seen in a lot of homes where they have particular areas dedicated for the kids' gameplay and like their activity skill building items. So I just decided to make use of that space like that. But I decided to put a garden in the back of the home because at some point, most people like to, I don't know, most people, I can't speak for most people, but me, let's just speak for me at this point. I do like to have a garden, especially where the gameplay is meant to be equal living and sustainable and having, you know, kind of uh, being mindful of your carbon footprint. So I made this sort of hodgepodge garden area in the back and I really like that. So we're getting really close to the end of the video and I just want to say that if you stay with me this long, I appreciate you guys. Consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing, and I'll make sure to leave videos for you every other day. Kisses. Bye.